In this video, I will show you how you can, this is one of the ways you can, not the only way, to build a hip roof for your home addition that is going to connect to your existing house that also has a hip roof on it. And no, there are no doors and windows in our room addition because I am not focusing on the walls in this room addition. I am going to be focusing on the roof for those of you wondering why. So I've already got the walls framed and connected to the existing house. And you might need to cut the overhang on the rafters off so that you can connect the new wall to the existing framing. And this would be a good place for a strap here. And again, I'm just going to kind of walk you through the process. I won't be providing you with all of the information you need because I have plenty of videos on that already. Now, if you can't find a video on our website, then let me know and I'll try to make one as soon as possible. Next up, let's go ahead and cut the overhangs off for the existing rafters so that we can start putting this thing together. And we are going to need to install some blocks along with perimeter nailing to those blocks for the existing roof sheathing. And those blocks will look something like this. So keep in mind that we need a transfer from the existing roof sheathing to the wall framing. So we're going to need to securely fasten the blocks to the top of the wall framing, along with nailing through the sheathing into these blocks. And again, these are only meant to be examples. You will need to contact an engineer or your local building authorities if you're looking for lumber sizes and nailing schedules. For example, how far apart you would need to space the nails for the block sheathing and perimeter nailing. Next up, let's go ahead and install our hip rafters, fill rafters, ridge, and common rafters. And as I said, I have plenty of videos for those of you who need more information for cutting the roof framing components at our website. And I will put a link in the video comment area or in the video description box to those videos. And the reason why I kind of stopped here, I built this section was because it would be the process I would follow to build something like this. I would probably build this area here, install some of my ceiling joists, if not all of them, along with a ridge that will tie into the existing roof sheathing. And then I'll be able to use that ridge along with the support boards that will nail to the existing sheathing so that I can measure and cut all of my fill rafters for the valley on this side and then the extension of this plane on this side. And I think the most difficult part of this process will be to cut the fill in for these areas and make sure that your rafters are the correct sizes to create a flat plane on this side or a flat surface from the existing house to the new addition. And when I say that, I've came across plenty of these that weren't done correctly, or maybe somebody ordered some roof trusses for it that weren't made correctly and usually end up with a hump or a raised area here instead of a nice flat transition. Next up, let's go ahead and work on this area. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece of roof sheathing. And you really don't need to do this, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how sometimes you can remove a couple of pieces of sheathing and then install new ones that will go all the way across instead of having this section here, like you'll see here in a few minutes. And again, I'm just kind of throwing out another idea. It doesn't mean you need to use it especially if it doesn't make sense. Now we did need to cut this ceiling joist and the overhang off of the hip rafter to create some type of a situation like this. Let's go ahead and take another look at it from this angle. And you're going to need to make sure that the hip still has full bearing, if you possibly can, on the framing plates. And I think it would be a good idea to have as much of the hip rafter sitting on top of the framing plates as possible, which means you're not going to want to cut it over here somewhere or back a little farther over here. Try to create a situation that would look something like that. And then we can go ahead and install the rest of our blocking and a couple of more common rafters to finish the overhang 
take a look at it from the bottom here. All the blocks are nice and straight to provide you with an idea of what the bottom of the roof overhang would look like. And again, all of the blocks are nice and straight. Looks like it's all part of the project, like the room addition was never even added on to the existing house. You want to make your room additions, if you possibly can, look like they were part of the original design of the home. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the fill rafter framing. Now, the last two rafters that we are going to install will be the ones for this area here. And that will be when we install the extension for the valley rafter. And in this example here, I installed an additional board. And this is what you're going to need so that you can support the bottom of the fill rafters. Something like this over here isn't going to have enough support. However, it might if you're using smaller rafters. For example, if you're using a 2x4 rafter, then a 2x6 might work here just fine. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how flat this is. And you might not be able to get a good idea, but it is flat. And how do I know? Because I built it with this program. Another thing you're going to want to keep in mind is that these rafters need to plane into the rafters below. You need to have a nice straight line through the roof sheathing, which means you might need to remove some of the roof sheathing and then frame these areas and then reinstall the sheathing. And the reason why I'm suggesting that, especially to those of you who've never done anything like this, is that if you don't double check this section here, this whole section right here, then you're going to end up with a hump or a raised area in the roof right here. And I'm not about to suggest it'll be the end of the world, just won't look that good. And another tip would be that the fill rafters you cut for one side will be the same on the other side, except for the angle cut here will be reversed. So for example, our angle is going to be up on this rafter kind of going in this direction on this rafter here, it's going to go in the opposite direction. And this cut right here will be the same angle as the roof that you're going to be attaching it to. For example, if this is a 4 and 12 roof pitch, the bottom of this will be a 4 and 12 roof pitch also. And if you're creating the same roof, this is going to be the extension here, the roof pitch for your home addition will be the same as the existing house. And again, I do have a video here on how to install all of the fill. Next up, let's go ahead and install the fascia board. And the reason why I want to install the fascia board is because sometimes it's going to be a little bit easier to finish this area off here if we have the fascia board installed and we're not guessing where exactly the fascia board is going to end up. And by now you should be getting a pretty good idea what the roof is actually going to look like after we install the roof sheathing. And I'm pretty sure I have a video on how to figure all of this stuff out. However, if there is not a video, let me know in the comment area. So the next thing we are going to want to do will be to cut the roof sheathing and the roof rafter, the existing roof rafter, and then install the valley extension board there. And let's just go ahead and take a look at it from underneath. And I don't think this is going to be that difficult to cut because this is actually a plumb line. You're going to be able to grab your level and then come right down off of this and then cut a 45 degree angle there. And then you're going to be able to measure these rafters and then cut your angle where it needs to be so that again it looks like you know what you're doing and that this was actually part of the original home. If not, and it doesn't turn out great, then maybe plant a tree in front of that area so nobody can see it. Next up, let's go ahead and install the ceiling joist. You will be notching some of these around the bottom of the hip, maybe the bottom of the rafter. And you can use hangers again or pressure blocks. I don't see why we can't use pressure blocks for something like that, especially since I built plenty of homes using pressure blocks. It just seems like we're getting a little carried away with some of this building hardware. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. And this is what I was referring to when I said that the sheathing can extend 
farther over this way and also provide us with a nice structural tie between this part of the room addition and the existing house. Even though most of the time you're going to do it like this, you're just simply going to run this down to around the overhang and then probably do what we did over here with the roof sheathing. And keep in mind that some engineers call out on the plans for minimum sizes of roof sheathing that might be 16 inches, 18 inches, or 24 inches, suggesting that this piece here wouldn't work. It would need to be a little bit larger. And of course, that would be something you would need to verify with your local building authorities. And keep in mind, if you live in an area where it snows, you might need a little stronger roof wider roof rafters. Instead of a 2x6, you might need a 2x10. And it might not be a bad idea to use structural hardware instead of the pressure blocks. And with that said, let's go ahead and wrap this video up by sheathing the rest of the house and completing this project here. And again, as always, if you have any questions at all about this project, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And don't forget to let us know that you enjoyed the video or learned something from the video by hitting the thumbs up button.